Aotearoa whenua. Aotearoa atua. Aotearoa pūkenga. Aotearoa tangata. Tēnā koutou. Ko Sarah Williams toko ingoa, e mahi ana aho ki te amorangi maturanga matua, te wahanga orititanga. Hello and a warm greetings to you as all this cold day as we nearly reach our solstice this winter. My name is Sarah Williams and I work in the Learner Success Team at the Tertiary Education Commission. Welcome to today's session, Teaching Online, Pedagogy and Practice. What do I need to know to be an effective, engaging teacher in the online space? We are very glad you could all join us today. Now, a couple of housekeeping points. Your audio and your video are disabled, but you can communicate with us via the chat and the question and answer functions. Please make sure you put any questions you have for our presenters into the Q&A section. You can upvote questions and you can comment on questions use the chat function for general comment or to notify us of any technical issues you might have. We have had 500 registrations for this forum today, so we do have a team of people looking after you in the background. Ravi is monitoring chat for IT issues and will respond directly to you to assist. Pat is also monitoring chat for any themes that may emerge and to redirect any misplaced questions. And Lasalle is looking after our question and answer function. Closed captioning is running for this session, so if you need that, you can enable it via your Zoom window. This session is being recorded and the full webinar will be available on the TEC website next week. A full transcript will be available with the webinar and the webinar will be captioned. So if you'd like to settle back and listen to our presenters today, you can do that knowing that you can come back to this at any time. So without further ado, I'd like to hand over now to our presenters, Mark Nichols from Open Polytechnic and Ali Hughes from TANS eCampus. Mark and Ali are going to share their knowledge over the next 30 minutes or so. And following that, we'll open up for question and answers. So without further delay, let me hand us over to Mark to get us underway. Mark. Tēnā koutou katoa, uh, ko Mark Nichols, toko ingoa, ko te atua, toko peringa, e whānau mai au ki Waitakere, e tipu mai au ki Tauranga, kei Romati South e noho ana. No London, me tamaki makaurau oku tipuna. Ko a te kai whakaharimatua o whakapakari akoranga ki te kurutini tuwhera. Tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. It's a privilege to be talking with you all today. So as I mentioned in my mihi, I'm the Executive Director of Learning Design and Development with Open Polytechnic, which is by far New Zealand's biggest and most successful provider of online distance education. So I've been asked to answer the question, what do I need to know to be an effective, engaging teacher in the online space? Well, to really give you a useful answer to that question, I'd like to take you on a bit of a road trip. But to be really clear from the outset, there's really just a single answer to the question. It's context. You see, the problem with the question, what do I need to know to be an effective, engaging teacher in the online space, is that there are so very many ways of answering it. You could go almost anywhere in response. There are many lists of best practice in online teaching. There's so much you might do that would improve your effectiveness and engagement in the online space. But not all suggestions will apply to your situation as an online teacher. So what's an exciting destination for some may not be enjoyable or worthwhile for you at all. So it's a good idea for us to take a step back. You're attending this webinar in search of an answer to the question, how do I teach better online? Well, the answer is context. And to illustrate why that's the case, I'll ask a parallel question. How do I make my car go faster? Now, again, it's a fairly simple question until you start to unpack it a bit. You see, if you drive a Toyota Corolla, you'd likely upgrade the exhaust system, install a higher revving camshaft, replace the stock flywheel with a lighter performance flywheel, that sort of thing. Now that's from Google. I don't believe for a moment that I know what any of that actually means. But if you're talking about a slot car, things are very different. Ignore the camshaft, go for disconnecting the lights to provide more voltage to the motor. Clean the contact braids, add some magnets and change the tires. Those are the things that'll give you the edge. Or if your car's a matchbox, get out your tiny toolbox, polish the axles, add some weight, file the chassis, lube with some graphite. If it's not against the rules, just launch it from a slingshot. If your car's in this condition, Get it lifted onto a trailer, drive the trailer away and your car goes faster. 
And oddly enough, the first step to making this car go faster involves a chainsaw. So seeing all of these cars on the same slide makes the answer clear. How you make your car go faster depends absolutely on what sort of car you're talking about. And with making online teaching more effective and engaging, the lesson's exactly the same. So the answer to what do I need to know to be an effective, engaging teacher in the online space is simple. You need to understand your context. Whether you need magnets or tires, a camshaft or a chainsaw, all depends on where you're starting from. So to improve your online teaching, you need, what you need to do relies totally on your context. Once you know your context, you'll begin to see the opportunities for teaching improvement begin to unfold. So what I'm gonna do in the remainder of this presentation is talk about context, context, context. I aim to do so by taking you to three destinations, SAMA, TPAC, and blended education. You might have heard all of these, uh, of all of these, well, that's fine. They're not new models, they're not new concepts. But even if you've seen these concepts before, knowing how they absolutely apply to you and how you become a more effective online educator will help you better understand your role in the online environment. I also suspect my take on blended education may be new to you. So our first destination is SAMA, a model introduced by Ruben Puentedra in 2006. It suggests that technology and education can lead to four main types of practice, substituted, augmented, modified, or redefined. If you substitute or augment, you're really enhancing your teaching. If you modify or redefine, Puentedra would say that you're transforming your teaching. Now, becoming more effective and engaging as a teacher might take place at any of these four points. I'm not saying that you must be transformative to improve your practice. To become more effective and engaging, you might just improve what you currently do. There's no imperative requiring you to advance up the SAMA possibilities. In fact, that might even be detrimental. Let's take a closer look. So if you're a lecturer at a university, there are plenty of things you might do with technology. You might just lecture as normal, but have your lectures live captured and streamed through a university service. These would be more effective means of substituting what you do through technology. You might also make your slides available for students to download separately. Or you might build in a live Twitter feed, have an active chat channel for streamed classes, include more online links to additional resources. These might be ways of augmenting your lectures. But you could also go much further to transform your practice. To modify your teaching, you might lecture less and adopt asynchronous forums for the exchange of ideas and academic debates. You might include student blogs, collaborative documents for assessment purposes, or add VR activities. To redefine your teaching, you might have students learn mathematics concepts using an AI uh, interface. Uh, in fact, a lot of the things that you would do there might not involve any sort of lectures at all. Now, online teaching is just so incredibly open-ended that multiple examples could be given for each of these. Don't be misled though by the shiny and new. Becoming a more effective and engaging online teacher might simply involve planning your lectures better. A carefully planned, scripted and insightful lecture is much better than a poorly planned online discussion forum or pointless VR activity. So transformational doesn't always mean more effective or more engaging. It just means different in new ways. There's opportunity within all four frames of SAMA to improve your practice. So the key question based on SAMA is, what's your context? And by this, I mean two things. Firstly, what's your appetite as an online teacher? Are you up for transformation or would you rather just enhance? Well, there's plenty you might do just enhancing your current practice that will make you more effective and engaging. Just improve your lecturing skills and your learning resources. If you're interested in transforming your practice, consider new approaches that are proven in use by others. Get to know the online learning literature as it relates to your subject area. But the second thing you need to bear in mind is there might be limits to what you can do. Is it realistic for you to transform your practice and in the institution you're part of? Very few of us have complete freedom over how we teach. It just might not be possible for you to modify or redefine your teaching. Take this webinar as an example. I'm constrained in the approach I can use to get these ideas across to you. I've got 15 minutes in a live session, so straight away that limits my SAMA application. The best I can do to make my presentation engaging and effective is to make it clear, keep the pace going, and illustrate my points using colorful examples. So what's your context? What's your appetite for different? And what are your constraints? Your answer to these questions will help you to identify how to become more effective and engaging. Our second stop is TPAC, a framework popularized by Matt Kohler in 2012. So TPAC is an acronym standing for Technological, Pedagogical, and Content Knowledge. If you like, it's the trinity of effective online teaching and that you need expertise across all three of these to become a truly effective and engaging online educator. But how realistic is that? 
It's extremely ambitious for anyone to develop expertise, and by that I mean really solid theoretical and practical insight across all three of these quite different areas. As an educator, you'll have some proficiency across these. Most of it will likely be in the content knowledge area. You'll also know enough to teach well and have enough technical knowledge to answer emails, use a learning management system, create PowerPoint slides, and possibly even author your own website. But to what extent can you go beyond this? I remember thinking making an effective instructional video was straightforward until I tried it and watched what I'd done. The content was fine, but the production values were just awful. The lighting was wrong, the sound was terrible, and the background was cluttered. I knew how to put in title slides and transitions, but someone with much better technical knowledge would have added an incredible amount to it. A little knowledge is a dangerous thing, and I think if we're honest, many of us are just not the pedagogical and technological experts we think we are. We know how to do a good job, but it's difficult to think about how new ideas and new teaching methods might be developed, and uh, our production values might just get in the way. In New Zealand, we've got this amazing DIY culture, but it's important that we know our limits. I'm a DIYer in that I can build an IKEA daybed, but I struggle to assemble a kitset garden shed, and I would never try to build a house. I'm just not expert enough. Moving to online education is similar. It's complex getting it right. An enthusiastic teacher can accomplish a lot and will no doubt do a really good job of online teaching. But to be really effective and engaging, you need to draw on those with specific expertise and technological and pedagogical knowledge. At Open Polytechnic, we develop our courses or modules in ways that make sense of the opportunities of online education. We mix the expertise of learning designers who have special insight into technological and pedagogical knowledge with that of subject experts who provide the content knowledge. Now in reality, it doesn't quite look like it does on the slide. We have a principal learning designer role whose job it is to define pedagogy as it relates to specific programs and an overall design framework conformed by good practice uh, that further defines the pedagogy. And we have an online user experience platform called iQualify, which also helps us into sound learning design. But I hope you can see the point. The subject matter expert or lead academic is defined on this slide doesn't do it all. To be an effective and engaging online teacher, I suggest you look toward becoming part of an online design team. So as is predictable by now, what's your context? Does your institution have learning designers, educational advisors, or specialist training? Get to know what these are and what they might offer you. Be open to their advice and resist trying to do it all or own it all yourself. If you want to be an effective and engaging online teacher, accept that the best value you can add is your subject or content knowledge. Adopt a collaborative mindset and add your strengths to the overall student experience. Okay, on to our last destination, blended learning. Many people think that blended learning is the single place between face-to-face -face or classroom education and online or distance education. Well, it's not quite like that. On campus and distance are the starting points though, and blended learning is the space between them. But there are two main forms of blended education that are actually very different, and on the job or apprenticeship learning can be different yet again. You see, if you start at one end or the other, you carry various assumptions into the online space. I like to summarize them in this way. If you start with the assumption of the classroom, you tend to think of blended learning in terms of a flipped classroom, and your role will become that of a teaching individual supported by online courseware. If you start from the distance end of the spectrum, you're likely to experience blended learning more from a student supporter role. So being effective and engaging as a teacher requires different skills depending on where across the spectrum you find yourself. But of course, there's a lot more to say about this because all of these contexts have additional expectations and possibilities attached to them. The level of study you're teaching to, the possibilities afforded by the subjects you're teaching, the number of students you're dealing with and what they expect of you, the support services that surround your role and the expectations of the institution you work for will all determine what you can do. And these will also determine what effective and engaging looks like. My advice to you is don't underestimate that last point of contact expectations. My very first experience of this happened about 20 years ago. I was an e-learning consultant appointed to help a particular team adopt a flexible, flipped approach to online learning. The work done is something I'm still proud of to this day. We developed a media-rich, online-supported model of flexible delivery based on a flipped classroom. Students had access to a very engaging and effective set of course materials that carefully explained core concepts and modeled practical skills. But it was a complete disaster. The problem was the students had not enrolled in a flipped classroom. They expected lectures. Their contact expectations were to be told what they needed to know. By now, it's no surprise as to what my summary point for this slide is. What's your context? 
If you're an on-campus teacher, it's difficult to become a blended on-campus teacher without a plan and without the support of your institution. Changing across any of these four categories presents a major shift in practice, largely because of your context. Okay, that's the third and final destination. Let me now take it home. My ultimate answer to the question, what do I need to know to be an effective, engaging teacher in the online space, is to begin with a thorough understanding of your context. You need to know your institutional strategies for online teaching, the support services on offer, your fit as a teacher in terms of the overall student experience. You need to be aware of the opportunities and constraints that apply based on your formal role as a teacher, your appetite for transformation, and the range of technological, pedagogical, and content knowledge you bring to bear. You need to know your context. If you're interested in learning more about your context, including further conversation about SAMA, TPAC, and what they imply for higher education, I invite you to read this book published last month by Routledge. In it, I explore the potential of digital distance education for higher education and why it represents the most accessible, scalable, and personalized form of teaching and learning that can possibly be implemented today. Uh, the book is based on the Whakapiri, Whakamarama, and Whakamana model of higher education proposed by Professor Sir Mason Jury, and it begins with an appreciation of what universities, polytechnics, and PTEs strive to achieve in changing student lives for the better. So if you're the sort of person interested in this webinar, I suspect you'll also appreciate this book. I also invite you to subscribe to the Leaders and Legends of Online Learning podcast, which has been going for about two years now. In it, you'll hear the perspectives of international experts whose work is entirely relevant for anyone seeking to better understand online education. Just one final point, professional associations such as FLANS, Ascolite, and ICDE are well worth joining, and there are plenty of journals and websites that offer excellent advice for online teaching. You'll also find my contact details on the slide. So thanks for your time, and I look forward to your questions. Ka kite anō o ia koutou. I'm handing over now to my colleague, Ali Hughes, who will be addressing the same theme of effectiveness and engagement in the online space. Hopefully everyone can hear me. I've just lost the... Um, the screen so I've got some hands raised that that's good okay thank you very much um, Mark that was really interesting so Mark has looked at what um, online course development and design looks like and my role now is to look at what that delivery looks like for um, for teachers and for our learners uh, but first a little bit about myself Tenakote Kata Ko Watership Down to Te Muanga, Ko Ichin Te Awa, Ko Hampshire Te Iwi, No Ingarangi Aho, Ke Otatahi Toko Kayanga Enaine, Ko Ali Hughes Toko Ingawa, Dareo Tenakoto, Tenakoto, Tenakoto Kata. So thank you and um, welcome from a very rainy um, Otatahi Christchurch. My role is um, as the learning experience and success manager for Tansy campus. So just a little bit of uh, context for you, for those who don't know TANS. Um, we are the online delivery platform for eight polytechs across New Zealand, working with them um, to deliver a range of their programs um, online. Our learners tend to be fairly non-traditional learners, uh, not necessarily what we expected when we started. Well, some may be working and studying part-time. Many of our learners are stay-at-home parents wanting to study full-time and often with jobs on the side. Learners are often first in family, many from low socioeconomic um, families, a high proportion of second chance learners with little or no previous positive experience of education and with few, if any, formal qualifications. They often have a lack of confidence, often quite fuckama about seeking support and feel that the whole world of academia is a new and scary prospect for them. Often their personal situations throw up logistical challenges as well. So when we think about online education, it's often perceived as the cheap and low quality alternative to face-to-face -face learning. 
However, it's clear from research that this is not what our learners expect. Although the research I'm currently showing is seven years old, I'm not sure a lot has changed today for many learners. And the experiences I've heard about this year, as many institutions struggle to get their information online in a very quick time frame, reinforces this belief. In many, many cases, there continues to be a disconnect between what learners think they will experience and what institutions are expecting to deliver. It is our challenge as online educators to meet their expectations. Moving past course design and development, which Mark talked about, once the delivery stage, the role of the facilitator is key. In this context, a facilitator as an experienced person, maybe an academic, or maybe a person experienced in that particular field who supports learners during their online courses. A facilitator will support and guide them through the course, encouraging conversation and ensuring that all learners are able to contribute and communicate in a positive and collaborate way. The roles and responsibility of the facilitators will vary from simple monitoring of non-engagement right through to guiding their learning. Transactional distance is the collection of perceived psychological, cognitive and effective distances between learners and instructors in all form forms of learning environments. It refers to the extent of time and distance between communication and impacts in a learner environment. Even in face-to-face -face teaching, there is an element of transactional distance. We probably all experienced those eager learners at the front row and those on their phone or asleep at the back of the class, or maybe it's just the class as I taught. But consider how much more difficult it is when the education is online. Key to overcoming these transactional distance is what we call facilitator presence. And we split that into three key areas. The teaching or instructional presence, what you do in the moment when interacting with your learners, the facilitation of discourse and direct instruction, um, pre-developed uh, presentations, assessing learner work, providing instructional feedback, diagnosing misconceptions, clarifying concepts, <coughs> excuse me, and referring students for additional resources. But then there's the social presence, particularly important at the start of the course, where learners are getting to know each other I need to get to know you and trust you. If students can make interpersonal connections with others, they're more likely to engage in the course and the content. And finally, the cognitive presence, central to all successful student learning. The quality of cognitive presence reflects the quality and the quantity of critical thinking, collaborative problem solving, and the construction of meaning. You can model and support uh, cognitive presence in your interactions with your students, in your discussions, in your assignment feedback, and in all your other communications. So talking about communications, building effective communication is key. Um, at Tansy Campus, we encourage our facilitators to um, be in contact with the learners via the um, postings on the course at least three times a week. Early in the week to set the scene, this is what we're going to be looking at this week. Maybe on the Wednesday, you add in a post about um, what they're learning so far. You might add in some of your personal experiences, give them something else to look at. And at the end of the week, you wrap up and you look forward to what is happening. The important thing is to have clear, consistent and unambiguous um, excuse me, an ambiguous communication and instructions. Learners don't have the chance to say, hey miss, I don't know what this means. And often non-engagement can come from learners switching off when they don't understand what to do. So regular communication, developing the relationships with learners and guiding their learning, coupled with timely replies to any query or questions. It's also important to share some of your own experiences and personality in your communication. 
there's nothing worse than getting something and you feel that it's just been something that's churned out course after course. Not only building communications, but you also need to build learning. As with face-to-face -face lessons, it's important there is deliberate scaffolding of the learning, each step building on what has been learnt to date and enabling the development of new skills and knowledge as you go. Much of this is the work of the course designer with the development of regular activities each week designed to engage learners, build knowledge towards summative assessments and additionally providing an opportunity to monitor a learner's success. When you make the effort to do all you can to support the learners in their academic endeavours and ensure they feel a sense of belonging, the learners are more likely to persevere in their student, in their studies and complete their qualification. At Townsea Campus in, 90, in 2019, we did an extensive project with our level three administration learners called the Kiora or Good Health Project, designed to better understand what learners needed to be successful online. We will talk later about the findings in terms of learning support, but what came out very strongly from learners of all ethnicities was the desire for that sense of whanauatanga, the relationships and belonging. It is our job um, as learning um, online educators to build that relationship. As Mark said, context is the key. And whatever we do, it's important to remember the context in which we operate. In Aotearoa, New Zealand, we have an obligation under the treaty, but more than that, we have an obligation to our learners to develop an environment in which they recognize themselves. The use of te reo and tikanga Māori in our work could include the um, inclusion of our pepiha, in introductions and the use of cultural references and relevant whakatoki in our work. To add to that sense of relationship, we also have a range of tools to enable the building of community across our learners, encouraging learners to share ideas, form study groups and interact with other learners all adds to that sense of belonging. Importantly, we need to help the learners build their learning. After all, that is the purpose of their studies. Offering tools such as smart thinking, where they can get impartial feedback on their writing, grammar, assessment and report structure is useful for learners, especially those who may not have experienced academic writing in the past. More importantly, we as educators need to give timely feedback on how they're doing and effective feed forward to guide and extend their learning. For learners studying at a distance, it's important that they develop good time management skills and a sense of what is needed and when. We provide a learning pathway for all our courses, setting out what is covered each week and highlighting key dates. In addition, our facilitators and student advisors can monitor progress on a range of dashboards and know where a learner is and if they've stopped engaging. This allows early intervention to hopefully get a learner back on track or to work with them on a plan B if life has got in the way of study.